name of the cockerels, they were a little lower down in the pecking order. A family lunch prepared by Dad using local ingredients. Yes, it's chips, Tibetan style, against the traditional backdrop of colour. Tibetan hospitality at its finest. And using yak dung for fuel. Mum joined in the cooking spree, even though it was her first time cooking anything. The food was still delicious, although I think yak tea is an acquired taste. It was a happy reunion. We talked about Chujin's proficiency in speaking Chinese and English, although with her parents, she speaks Tibetan. Have you noticed a difference in uh, your daughter, Chujin, as she's been working in the city? Some young Tibetans still follow the monastic route, becoming monks or nuns. But it was hard to ascertain the exact figures of the numbers that do. Philosophical debate and learning is a crucial part of a monk's life. But I can't help wonder whether there's an inner conflict for younger generation monks as the landscape around them races into the modern age. What are their real hopes and fears for the future? when their values and traditions are being shaped by more potent forces. Back in the heart of Lassa's historic quarter at Barkor Square, it's not hard to find the vendors from all over China and beyond. They're selling their versions of Tibetan goods to tourists. But not me today. Shalba has owned a shop selling local goods like these precious stones for three years. He's part of the rising tide of migrants from rural areas moving to the cities. Masan 流行的东西受到西藏受到西藏的发展怎么样发展很多对事情的看法甚至价值观都跟老一辈有很大的差别there's a cultural centre in Lhasa where Tibetan teens were getting ready for a future show. They performed widely across China, including the Olympic Expo. I'd gone to meet four members of this troupe 
to find out how connected they felt to their cultural roots. Most of them were in their late teens and were in their third month of rehearsals. They're growing up in a new age. Yet the cultural bond between these Tibetans and the four that I met also have their own rock band is still apparent. This wonderful Tibetan dance that you've just performed, um, there's a story, it's telling a story. What is that story? I sense that you've been, you've been speaking to each other a lot in Tibetan, but you also were all fluent in Chinese. Why is it so important now for your generation to speak Chinese? Because Their band goes by the name Punk Nana and has been together for a few years. They're all classmates at university in Chengdu and they study Tibetan opera. They told me their idol is Avril Lavigne and here they're working on their new album. It's original music that's all in the name of rock. Like any aspiring rock stars, their goal is to reach a wider audience and make it big. I'm told that Tibetan rock bands are popular in other parts of China, but an all-girl Tibetan band is something quite new. They're now joined by their mentor, who knows a lot about the local music scene here. Tamishan 对，包括物质，包括对家庭，可能想法可能更多。但他们现在的话，可能对这种没什么想法。During a break in rehearsals, the band's chatting in Tibetan. After a little thought, they showed us how well their opera singing was coming along. Dinghu 天气特别冷
，怎么说特别的那个规有有有很大的那种规范吧？嗯嗯，在上每个动作呀，那些唱腔都有一定的规定，但是乐队这边没有那样子。我们在排练的时候。嗯，怎么说？有什么不好？嗯，心情呀，那些都可以在嗯排练当中可以尽情的发泄。发、嗯、The night scene in Tibet is getting louder and more dazzling. Tibet's new generation is now exposed to all kinds of influences, including rock music. So I'm here tonight to see Tibet's first female Tibetan rock band, an interestingly named Punk Nana. Let's take a look. Punk Nana was in their element in this nightclub full of young Tibetans. Golden yaks are a blend of Chinese style and the Tibetan way of life. Yet the traditional and simple way of living is now more remote for much of Tibet's younger generation. For those that live in the cities, a new outlook is emerging. There's still a sense of Tibetan pride, but it will be up to the new generation to take the yak by the horns and keep this alive in years ahead.